What up, YouTube? You already post fight video of the Oshaki Foster versus Eduardo Hernandez fight. Now, before I give y'all the summary of what happened in the fight, I'm going to tell y'all the results first. Oshaki Foster was able to retain the WBC Super Featherweight title via 12th round TKO. And I can say this fight is a strong candidate for being the best fight of the year. It was dramatic, it was thrilling, and the action in this fight was top notch. And it was a close competitive bout before the stoppage happened. I had this fight scored 105 to 103 heading into the 12th round. Now, he scored two knockdowns, Oshaki Foster did, before getting that TKO win. And I think that came from the hurt that he caused in the 11th round. And I say the 11th round between these two fighters was the best round that I saw from the sport of boxing produced and what was a very busy year for the sport that it's been thus far. And if Hernandez would have made it to the end of the fight, I would have had a score 115 to 111 if he didn't get dropped any more than the twice that he got dropped in the 12th round and I thought the referee's decision to call a halt to the bout was the correct decision to make because Eduardo Hernandez was out on his feet he was up and he was there the lights were on but nobody was home ever heard that saying before that's how Eduardo Hernandez was looking and Oshaki Foster did a great job at closing in on his wounded, hurt opponent in Eduardo Hernandez. And to sum up what happened in the fight, Eduardo Hernandez fought a brilliant fight with a gained effort. He had a good game plan of making the slick defensive boxer Oshaki Foster have a uncomfortable fight and it was a difficult style fight for Oshaki Foster to fight because Eduardo Hernandez he was relentless in this fight and his aggression and his work rate was a lot to handle for Oshaki Foster and Hernandez did a good job at closing the gap and having this fight being fought at a inside range more than it being on the outside where Oshaki Foster would have liked this fight to be competed at. And Oshaki Foster, his mobility was neutralized through the volume and the pressure that was applied by Eduardo Hernandez and Oshaki Foster, he did a good job at neutralizing the aggression and handling the pressure that Hernandez brought to him very well. Although he did show signs of discomfort and he showed signs of him getting hurt and being affected by the game plan of Eduardo Hernandez and Hernandez's flurry of shots was taking its toll on Oshaki Foster as Hernandez was having a lot of moments throughout the whole fight up until the stoppage. And I will say it took over two rounds for Eduardo Hernandez to get in tune and find his rhythm to set the pace 
for his offense for the rest of the fight because Oshaki Foster, he started out early and he was in his groove from the sound of the bell. He was fluctuating, maneuvering throughout the ring very fluidly and very fast and very well. And Oshaki Foster, throughout the whole fight, did a good job at establishing the jab, as he always does. And as I said, Eduardo Hernandez did a good job with his head and upper body movement and his setting up of angles to close a gap between the two. And he also did a good job at attacking from different angles while in close range and using pivots to create angles to attack Oshaki Foster from while they was on the inside. And that was frustrating Oshaki Foster. And Oshaki Foster, on his part, that was a good look for him, was his ability to catch Hernandez coming in with swift, fast counter punches that was timed very well. And I'm impressed by Oshaki Foster's ability to telegraph his opponent's lunges and attacks and his ability to read the distance with him and his opponent to create enough separation for him to have that space to fight the fight that he wants to fight. And Oshaki Foster already has a reputation of being a slick, defensive, well-maneuvering fighter. And he displayed that factor very well in this fight, regardless of the fact that Eduardo Hernandez made this fight a very difficult one for him. And Oshaki Foster keeps on improving. As y'all know, he's not unbeaten. He already has two defeats on his record. It's the fact that he recently became WBC Super Featherweight Champion a few years ago. I don't know the exact time span of when Oshaki Foster became the WBC Super Featherweight Champion. However, he's been making improvements and he's been getting better with his game when it comes to the sport of boxing. And his technical ability is very sound. And Oshaki Foster, this win versus who the WBC ranked as their best contender, according to their organization, this win was a good look for Oshaki Foster and another name to add on to his ongoing resume that is on a uppity slope. And his win versus who's considered by many people as the best featherweight champion in that weight class. I'm talking about Ray Vargas, who he fought last defending his WBC Super Featherweight title before fighting Eduardo Hernandez. He outboxed Ray Vargas. And that was, I would say, thus far in his career, his most notable victory. And that gave him more recognition amongst the boxing fans and him producing a firework of a fight that we saw with him and Eduardo Hernandez puts his name more on the map now and him closing out a close competitive fight the way he did in the 12th and final round in a very dramatic fashion and what was a emphatic TKO win and that adds more notoriety and that levels him up when it comes to being considered the top super featherweight in the world at that division and the 11th round, as I had mentioned earlier, I would say is the best round I saw thus far from the sport of boxing this year. And he caught Eduardo Hernandez coming in with a swift, perfectly timed left hook. And Eduardo Hernandez was rocked. 
he was up on his feet, yet he was out on his feet, and he didn't have his footing up under him, and Oshaki Foster was all over him looking to close out the fight and to end his opponent that was hurt. And he was a predator on the loose going after his hurt prey. However, Eduardo Hernandez would turn things around when he would have his back against the ropes and ever heard the saying desperate times call for desperate measure that's exactly what we saw produced in the 11th round when we saw Eduardo Hernandez throw punches back at Oshaki Foster when Oshaki Foster was all over him and he would catch Oshaki Foster with the shot of his own shot of his own that rocked Oshaki Foster and staggered Oshaki Foster and had Oshaki Foster going on the back pedal once again after catching Oshaki Foster with a counter straight right hand that caught Oshaki Foster flush in the center of the face. And Oshaki Foster, he showed that that shot took a toll on him and that shot definitely pay dividends for Eduardo Hernandez. Then Hernandez was all over him. That wasn't enough for Hernandez to win that round. However, it was definitely a movie-like moment that we saw produced out of the 11th round in this fight. And I forgot to mention another impressive factor that I saw, an attribute that I saw displayed by Eduardo Hernandez was his ability to level change his punches, placing his punches while throwing combinations. And that's from going from targeting the head and when the head isn't available for flush shots and he would target the body of Oshaki Foster and this is how you want to fight these type of fighters you want to hit whatever's available doesn't matter if he got his guard up doesn't matter if you don't get all your punches landed on on a fighter like a Oshaki Foster doesn't matter if you don't get him flush in the face or in the ribs or in the liver stomach abdomen whatever if you get a belt buckle shot that doesn't land at a hundred percent if you get a glimpse of his head with a shot that you threw with all your might doesn't matter if you hit his elbow his gloves as long as you make contact that's the approach that you want to approach a fighter like Oshaki Foster with. And that's the type of mentality and style that Eduardo Hernandez possessed. And as well displayed in this fight versus Oshaki Foster. Then in the 12th round we saw Oshaki Foster pick up from where he left off at in the 11th round. It looked like Oshaki Foster recovered fully from that period that break from the 11th and in between the 12th and Eduardo Hernandez it was the opposite for him because he didn't look like he fully recovered from the shot that he suffered the effects from that shot that he suffered from the 11th round that Oshaki Foster caused on him and then Oshaki Foster with this precise accurate punching he would land yet another flush straight right hand accurately and precisely causing Hernandez to hit the canvas for the first time in the fight Hernandez being a valiant warrior he would get back up on his feet and the referee gave him opportunity to fight back and close out the fight and go to distance however Oshaki Foster finished the fight like a good finisher should as he saw Hernandez wasn't at a hundred percent and he was staggered and he was hurt and Oshaki Foster took advantage of that and he went fully at the hurt and 
barely conscious Eduardo Hernandez with flurries of punches and then he will catch Hernandez again with combinations of punches that was landing flush on Hernandez who was throwing just to throw to survive and he didn't have his guard up because he didn't know what he was doing because he was out on his feet from the effects that he suffered from these shots that Foster was landing on him. And Oshaki Foster, after dropping Hernandez for the second time, Hernandez would answer the referee's count yet again when he hit the canvas for the second time. However, he was maneuvering throughout the ring like a chicken with his head cut off and the referee clearly saw that and he called a halt to the bout because Hernandez wasn't defending himself properly and as I said that was a correct call if he would have let this fight continue any longer with the way it was going Foster probably could have knocked him out cold or Hernandez would have got dropped again and even if, hypothetically speaking, if he was able to get back up on his feet, he wouldn't have been at 100%. He would have looked worse for dropping for a third time if the referee didn't get in between those two fighters and stop the bout. And as I said, this fight was very competitive, very close of a bout, and... Both fighters fought a well strategic fight. I would say as far as having the better game plan and fighting the smarter fight, that that part of the game, that edge goes to Eduardo Hernandez because he fought a very intelligent fight. And when he stepped off the gas pedal starting from the 7th and 8th round, that wasn't because Hernandez was fatigued like the commentators were saying. Come to find out, his corner would tell the commentary team that Hernandez was preserving himself for the championship rounds. And that is a strategy that we don't see from many fighters. And I thought that was a aspect of the game that... I respect that I saw displayed by Hernandez and his team. And Oshaki Foster, as I said, I think this definitely should make him, who's fought at the Super Featherweight division longer than Emmanuel Navarrete, even though Navarrete has the better resume, I would say, and the better record. It's either him or Navarrete that is the top super featherweight and I would like to see title unification bouts happen in the super featherweight division because there is no current unified super featherweight champions as I said the WBO super featherweight champion is Emmanuel Navarrete who defeated long time household name at the super featherweight division oscar valdez in a very impressive victory and a very well fought performance that we saw produced out of emmanuel navarrete from that fight versus valdez which was his last bout then we have oshaki foster who's the wbc super featherweight champion then there's the ibf super featherweight champion Joe Cordina, who successfully defended his IBF Super Featherweight title tonight. And then the WBA Super Featherweight champion, Hector Luis Garcia. And the WBC's next best contender, according to their rankings, is Pablo Vincente, who is 25-1. and He's a Cuban fighter, and he has a... Cuban style of fighting and stylistically speaking that is a difficult style for any boxer to fight against and with the slick technical style that Oshaki Foster has and he has that defensive mobile very agile style of fighting that can call for a chess match of a bout between those two fighters. Now, 
drawing wise, Oshaki Foster not being that much of a marketable fighter, regardless of the fact that he's from Texas and Texas being a huge boxing state, Oshaki Foster isn't a hot ticket sale of a fighter when it comes to the public. And hence why Oshaki Foster went on the road to defend his title. Usually we'll see the champion have the hometown advantage and the challenger going on the roads to challenge a champion for his title. We saw the opposite produce out of this fight with Foster and Hernandez. Now, with Pablo Vincente being a Cuban, Cuban fighter based out of Panama, and he's not that much of a notable name amongst the public, and I would say even amongst boxing fans, I'd say dedicated boxing fans and only a very few dedicated boxing fans are familiarized with Pablo Vincente and that's despite the fact that Pablo Vincente is highly ranked not only by the WBC but by all the other sanctioning bodies amongst the super featherweights. Now would the zone and matchroom look for Oshaki Foster to have a fight versus the next best ranked contender by the WBC for Oshaki Foster's next bout. Marketably speaking, money-wise, promotionally speaking, that wouldn't be the move to make if Oshaki Foster and his team wants Oshaki Foster's name to be more out there. We saw Joe Cordina, who also fights on the zone, and he's more of a well-reckoned name because he is a Welsh fighter, and that's out there in the UK, and the UK, I always mention this, they have more support when it comes to their local scene and they put more of a effort into emphasizing and valuing the prestige of the sport of boxing now a title unification bout would be a good look for both Oshaki Foster and Joe Cordina and that would call for a good fight as well now that would definitely be more of a appealing bout for boxing fans and it would be a better look for the sport as well with that fight if it's to happen being the first title unification bout in the super featherweight division then there is leo santa cruz who is a veteran who's been fighting at the super featherweight division for quite a while. However, he hasn't fought in almost two years. The last time we saw him fight was February of last year, and that was a 10-round bout where he got a decision victory versus a non-familiar name, a fighter by the name of Keenan Carbajal, and that was his bounce back fight from that devastating knockout loss that he suffered versus Gervonta Davis. And I don't know if Leo Santa Cruz is going to be in any shape to fight a in prime active champion like Oshaki Foster. Then there's Oscar Valdez, who is the next best ranked contender after. Matter of fact, now that I'm looking at it right now. Oscar Valdez is ranked higher than Pablo Vincente, and Valdez 
this would be a good redemption shot for Valdez to challenge for yet another super featherweight title, this time for the WBC super featherweight title, which is a title that he's held before after that defeat he suffered versus Emmanuel Navarrete. However, promotionally speaking, it can be a difficult fight to make happen with top rank who promotes Oscar Valdez's bouts and Matchroom, who promotes Oshaki Foster's bout, top rank. They had their fights being broadcasted on ESPN, while Matchroom and their fighters, their fights are broadcasted on the zone. And we don't see that crossover promotional fights happen that often with top rank and Matchroom. And that fight would be a good look for Oshaki Foster, who is a lesser known name than a Oscar Valdez. For Oshaki Foster, who would definitely be the favorite to come out victorious in that fight, that would be the ideal fight to make happen for Oshaki Foster if, o if Oshaki Foster and his team wants Foster's name to be more reckoned with. And, and then there is Lamont Roach Jr., who's been a longtime contender amongst the super featherweights for a long time. His only defeat came from Jamel Herring, who retired after losing to Shakur Stevenson. And Lamont Roach Jr., he's been collecting victories ever since that defeat he suffered versus Jamel Herring. Then there's Shafka Rakimanov. He had a close competitive bout for the IBF Super Featherweight title. That's the bout where Joe Cordina won the IBF Super Featherweight title. That was a split decision fight that we saw between Rakimanov and Cordina. And I'm sure he would like to get another shot at being world champion. And then there is Otar Onision, who is a unbeaten prospect. And then there's Robson Canseco, who's been a top contender, a well-decorated amateur as well. And Robson Canseco, he's had built himself a reputation by fighting the top super featherweights. He fought Shakur Stevenson. He fought Oscar Valdez in what was considered to be a controversial decision loss for him. Where many people thought that Conseco should have came out victorious in that fight versus Valdez. And then there is Javier Herrera who's a unbeaten Cuban prospect as well. He is amongst the top 10 contenders ranked by the WBC. And... As I said, Oshaki Foster, for him to be, I would say, the best super featherweight, which he should be considered amongst being the top one or two super featherweights in the division right now. He's definitely in the convo for that title. Even though, as I said, that there is no current unified super featherweight champions in the division right now. It's a toss-up between him and Emmanuel Navarrete on who's the best super featherweight in the world right now. And, as I said, the most ideal bout to make happen next for Oshaki Foster with this role that he's on right now would be versus Joe Cordina who's the current IBF super featherweight champion, if not Rakimanov, That would also be another fight for Oshaki Foster that could keep his momentum going and as well as him getting a more notable opponent listed on to the current building resume that he's working on right now. And 
for him to fight a fighter that isn't a fighter that's promoted by Matchroom or has their fights aired on the zone, that would be more of a tougher bout to make happen, promotionally speaking, and as well as him having a fight versus another champion at Super Featherweight that is promoted by another promotion. Anyways, y'all let me know what y'all thoughts are from this fight that y'all saw with Oshaki Foster and Eduardo Hernandez. And Oshaki Foster, much credit to him. Shout out to him for this win. He got the win on the road as well, which is even more impressive. And shout out to Eduardo Hernandez as well for a valiant effort and a brilliant fight. And that does it for this video. Y'all let me know what y'all would like to see next produced out of the Super Featherweight division. And as well as what would y'all like to see next out of Oshaki Foster. Who should be Oshaki Foster's next immediate challenger for his next fight? Comment y'all opinions and thoughts in the comments. Subscribe, share, like, all that good stuff. And that does it for this video. And click the links in the description to show y'all support as well. Anything would be appreciated. And I'm out of here, y'all. Be good. Peace.